Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Let me just adjust my camera a little bit. All right, welcome to part two of Butterfly Boot Camp. It's a technique series where I teach you lots of different stamping, card making techniques, box making techniques, all using the butterfly, butterfly, oh my goodness, how did I forget? Let's open it up here. The Butterfly Brilliance Bundle. Okay, this is the Butterfly Brilliant stamp set. Okay, I was just making sure the name of the stamp set is a little different from the name of the dies. And then you're, you're going to use the Brilliant Wings dies. The Brilliant Wings dies in this series, I'm just going to show you one of them because they're so incredible. We're not using one in this video in particular. This is a card making video, but this is one of the Brilliant Wings dies. They're just amazing. So in this series, we're working on all kinds of cards, and this is found in the Page 106 of our annual catalog, it's on my website, linked in the description. You can follow along with all my videos, and some of you have purchased my boot camp kit. So if you purchase the boot camp kit, we're going to start out by making cards, and just go ahead and get out the paper that you'll need from, the, from this pack of cardstock. You're going to need a piece of petal pink. You're going to need, well actually we've already used the petal pink, so you should already be, on part one we used the petal pink. This time we're going to use the pool party and the very vanilla. That's all you're going to use from this one. Even though there's vellum cardstock in here, you're not going to use the vellum cardstock. I actually gave you vellum doilies to use for this card. Okay, I'll say hi in a couple of minutes to whoever comes on live. And just to review, I just wanted to say something about what we did in part one, in case you missed it. Though There's a playlist, and all the videos will be in the playlist. So in part one, I talked about the Stamparatus. We took the Butterfly Brilliant stamp set. I showed you how to mount it. I showed you how to use a large stamping block for stamping with the stamp, or you could use the Stamparatus. So we created our backgrounds. After we stamped the backgrounds onto Petal Pink, which is what we did in part one, we then, we used mostly Cherry Cobbler, but I did show you what it would look like stamping in just Memento Black Ink. But for the most part, we used Cherry Cobbler. And then after, we, after that, and here's the Cherry Cobbler ink, we'll use it again for the sentiment, just, just to be consistent. After we did that, we, we then embossed the backgrounds. Okay, so I used, I embossed this with these, you can actually use any embossing folders, basically. Use the larger embossing machine, the stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm going to show you the different embossing folders you could use, but you really don't have to use the one I used. Just use any embossing folder to emboss your background after you stamp it. So I use, let's see, this is, I use this one, Tasteful Textile 3D Embossing Folder. That's what I recommend for the course. That's not included in your kit. You would just get any embossing folder. But then I also showed you how to use this embossing folder, this brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. Okay, so in part one, we, we did the stamping. We, I taught about how to, I tell you how to stamp the background. And what's great about using the Stamparatus is when you don't get a clear stamp, when, you, when your stamp doesn't come out perfect the first time, then you, you just keep doing it and you get perfect stamps and you get good coverage. Okay, I talked about how to re-ink a stamp because I thought it was light, so we re-inked it. We re-inked the stamp, and I look at the difference when I, right after I re-inked the cherry cobbler. Now, since then, I've used it a lot, but I showed you how to re-ink your stamp pad, and then we got this nice, crisp stamp image like that. Then I showed you how to emboss the backgrounds, and I really did like the way the brick and mortar came out, this brick and mortar 3D background like this. I really like how it came out, but we also used the, you know, the, the text, tasteful textiles 3D embossing folder. So that's all we did. Now these have dried, and you can see the different ones. And I just want to show you this happy accident a while back. This is not a watercolor class or anything, by all means. This isn't even the kind of ink you would watercolor with. But look what happened when I had wet hair and I dripped on it. I think that came out kind of cool. It's an accident. And it's going to be covered up with the piece of, with the vellum doily from your kit, with the um, layers. We're going to cover that up. But I think that's kind of cool. So if you ever wanted to have that effect, just drip all over it and you could get a neat kind of effect. Look at, it comes out a different color and everything. But a different, maybe another class will do watercoloring. That's not this class, I just wanted to show you that little happy accident. So now what we want to do, let me, let me say hi to everybody, we're going to, this is what we're doing this time. We're going to take our pool party and we're going to make these cards start to finish. They're just plain inside. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to have these cards, these are A2 cards and we're going to have them open from the top. Okay, so that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing now. Now you're going to take your cardstock if you have the kit, and only U.S. residents can get the kit, but you can follow along with my class from whatever country you're in. 
you would get out a piece of pool party and a piece of very vanilla. Oops, not, not this. Very vanilla cardstock out of here. I'm, I'm keeping this because I need to send this to somebody. I'm going to take my pack here. I'm going to take my cardstock out of this pack here. So this is called the Subtles Collection. So the, the colors I'm using, the, one of the ways you know they coordinate without trying to have to do any research is if you're using colors in the same collection, we have different color collections and there's 10 colors in each collection, then you're going to know that they're going to coordinate. So that's, that's one nice thing. So see, this is where the petal pink came from, that Subtles Collection. That's the, the Blushing Bride. See, we have soft, soft, soft sea foam. Mm. Petal pink, blushing bride, so saffron here. Let me just get to the one we need. We need the pool party. Okay, there it is. Um, there's balmy blue. There's other kinds of blue in there. Oh, wait a minute. What's that then? Hold on. What's that? Mint macron. Okay, mint macron. I had to make sure because look, they look so much alike, especially with my light. I have, I have a, I'm trying to, you know, use a better. Let me make sure. I'm bringing the light closer, yes. See how this is the blue and then the other one's Mint Macron. So let me put the light back. The light came out of its case, just, just to make sure. All right, we're gonna close the subtle collection. We're gonna do the scoring, the cutting. So for this, you just need any, you know, any Stampin' Trimmer. Your Stampin' Trimmer may also score for you, which is fine, which is great. But if you, I just prefer to score using what's called the, the Simply Scored Scoring Board. This tool, that's how I like to store my cards. But if you have a score, if you have a, a cutting blade and a scoring blade, by all means, score on there. Okay, so let's see if I can't raise this. But I don't want to raise it too high because I want to see who came in. I want to be able to say hello. So I need to, I don't want to raise this up off too high where I have to like get on my tiptoes to see the comments. Oh, cool. A lot of you guys have joined me today. Hello, Patty. Hello, Tanya and Deb. Deb K and Tina, Tina G. I'm glad you found me live, Pamela. You said it's been a long time since you found me live. I did say I was coming on Friday night. I just didn't know why or when on Friday night, uh, East Coast. And I, it's kind of late on Friday night, but not on the West Coast. It's not late. But you know what? This was the only time I could come on. I tried all day. My house was like a crazy town of all the noises. And it's finally quiet. Everybody's gone to bed. All right, so let's see. Uh, Tina, hello, Tina. We said hello, Tina. Already had Karen, M, and Tanya's from New Zealand. And hi, Carolyn. I'm glad you love the embossing folders, Patty. Hi, Kaz from Australia. Drippy art, yeah, drippy wet hair. <laughs> She's talking about, uh, Pamela's talking about drippy art. I didn't mean to do that, but like when you're dripping water onto your card, it kind of looks cool, right? <laughs> but there's other, we'll do other water techniques later. I think that'll be fun. And hi, Katie. Hey, Katie, is your kid is on the way. She's in Washington State, so your kid is on the way. So hello, Joanne and Daisy and Teresa. So you can follow along with whatever cards you, card materials you have. Okay, so that, that's fine. So let's, let's talk about this kind of card. We have A2 cards. We can open them. We can either open them from the top or we can open them from the side. I think this one looks better open from the top, which means that we're going to have to... So let me just kind of... Why you got your piece of eight and a half by 11 card stuck out? You need to, you need to understand how we're going to, we're going to open this from the top. So let me open up this card. Let me open up another one. I, I, this is boot camp, So you have to make your own cards in this. You know, I'm not making the cards for you and sending them to your score. You have to score them and cut them yourself. See how this is going to work? You get two cards out of one piece of card stock. So you see how this works? You're, because I'm going to open them from the top, I need to take my card stock and score it first along the horizontal okay so I'm gonna have to score it along the five and a half mark see I'm gonna turn the cards that way so you can visualize that so I'm gonna take my, my this is simply scored and you can see that this paper is 11 by eight and a half see eight and a half by 11 so I'm gonna score it at five and a half let me put it down flat put it down flat when you score it five and a half okay so that's that's the valley I scored down now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut it, right? I'm going to cut it now. It's already scored. I'm going to cut it. Now you have two cards. You have two cards made, so we'll make two cards tonight. Okay, we're going to go. Now that we know that the, the paper's eight and a half by the, in the other direction, we're going to go to eight and a half. Can you see? Well, actually, not eight and a half. I'm sorry. 
The paper's eight and a half. We're going to go to four and a quarter. Okay? So we're going to go at four and a quarter and we're going to cut it. So there we are. We have our two cards. We've made our two cards. We have the valley. They're, they're four and a half. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five. They're four and a quarter. And they're 11 this way, but they're going to be five and a half. Like that's the five and a half card. I can't promise you when there'll ever be a handout, if there'll ever be a handout, and when this will be in the description, but that's why I'm doing video series. I'm more of a video person. I will try to get the handouts done. I know I'm very behind on handouts, but you're going to go down. See how this is a valley? You're going to go, you're going to lift. You're going to lift it up. That's a mountain. So someone's asking where my accent's from, but I have, I've, I've lived all over the place, but I guess my original accent would be from Philadelphia. Pennsylvania, if you want to know my original accent. I mean, I grew up in a city, in the city. And when I get together with family members, it all comes out. But, but that's my original accent. But I've actually lived all over, and I, I've actually learned to speak way slower because of all the different countries I've lived in. And they said, you speak too fast, so we can't understand you. And so I, I had to really slow my voice down. It's been a struggle because I like to speak fast. So there we go. There's our two cards. Understand that part. If there are any questions, definitely ask. There's your two cards. Easy peasy. I could do this all day. In fact, you do that first. You make your cards. You just do all your cards first. You just sort of make them and make all your card bases, I mean. So let's start layering. And let's look at these as a guide. Now remember, they, so these were, these were only an eighth of an inch smaller. When we, when we created this, it was only an eighth of an inch smaller. Than the, you know, the, than the edges, just to see that little piece of pool party sticking out. But we can't stick all that on yet because we need to do the ribbons. So we're gonna just, we'll do, you know, hmm, maybe, you know, a couple different cards, right? So what you do for the ribbons is you're gonna take out, you got your little, um, let's see, buckets of, let me see. Bucket of crafty goodness, okay? We're just probably, I don't know if I have enough ribbons in there to make two, but probably at least one. Let's go open this, I mean, of this kind of card. I put some tissue paper in it so it wouldn't stay. You can use any ribbon you have. So what I'm gonna do is take out, this is the pool party. Okay, we're gonna put pool party across the middle. Maybe we can do two, we probably can do two. And let's see, there should be two feet of, two feet of linen thread. We probably can just, do, that's enough linen thread for the one. Oh wait, here's another piece. There's two feet, there we go. Okay, I think we can do two. Well, we're gonna try to do both cards that way. If not, if not, we're gonna use a piece of very vanilla scallop trim, which would look nice. We can use other trim. I mean, you don't have to use the trim I'm showing you, right? You can use whatever materials you have. In fact, I tried this earlier with what's called the I think it was called Early Espresso, and that looked, that looked good, too. So let, let's just talk about this. Let's see if we can get how much pool party we can get out of this. All right, good. We can do it. We can do two cards. So see what I'm doing? I need This is pool party sheer ribbon, and I need to make sure I have enough. So I'm just going to cut it in half. I'm just going to fold it around and cut it in half just to make sure I have enough for both cards. I'm just digging into one of the kits. I'll have to make another one later. But in your kit, you have a, a foot of this and two feet of the twine. So you can actually make both cards. There you go. So we'll save this piece. We're going to do... Not save the piece. I'm sorry. We're, we're going to make two cards is what I mean. Not save the piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to attach this. See what I'm doing? I'm going to attach that and then I'm going to do the twine. I'm just making a layer of sheer ribbon. It just helps. So you're going to take the, you're going to flip your card over and you're going to use a little bit of snail adhesive for your ribbon. Okay, a little piece of on each side. See that? You don't have to worry about using it underneath the, the ribbon itself because there's going to be embellishments that hold it onto the front. So just attach the ribbon like that. Go around, attach the ribbon. Like so. Okay, I'll, I'll add a little bit more adhesive in a minute. So let's do that to this one too. We'll attach the ribbon. And no two cards are going to be exactly alike. And you don't have to make them exactly like I'm using. And use whatever steps that you have and follow along with whatever ribbon you have. 
It'll be fun. Just make a card. Always make a card. Send people cards. It's always good fun. People love to hear from you. So that's the back. Now we want to do the, the twine. Now we have a foot of twine for each card. So let's see. If I can cross it around, I will. Let's see if I can just do the crisscross thing. So if I can, if I can make it go... Well, first of all, you always want to... Yeah, I have enough. Okay, see how that works? Okay. Let's, I just wanted to make sure I had enough before I showed you that technique. If not, I would have had to have done... If I didn't have enough to do the whole crisscross, I would have had to do one line and then one line. But it's so much easier doing a crisscross. Crisscross applesauce. All right, we're going to go like this. We're going to put a piece of... Just go like this. Put in lines of adhesive. Number one, it helps reinforce... It helps reinforce that other ribbon to keep that there. But number two... It helps when you put your string there. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to put my string there, my twine, my linen thread. It's called linen thread. And I'm going to go down. See how I just went like that? I'm going to go down like that and across. See, I'm just, I'm just doing a crisscross. I'm just going down, around, and up. See that? So I crisscrossed. It's a great little layer of twine. Now you could tie it off now. If you tie it off, you have less of a chance of having a problem of it falling off the card. You can tie a knot back there. But if you don't have enough, you just use adhesive to hold it back there. But I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot because it is just it is just linen thread, so you can tie a knot. Probably should have left myself a little bit extra. But you, you, my husband's very direct, so I said, cut these in one inch, in one foot pieces. I can't say one foot and three inches to him. You know, wouldn't it have worked. And he, he's like, just give me simple instructions. What do you want me to do? So he cut them in one foot each, and then we put like two in each little kit. Now I need to cut those off a little bit like that so it's not so lumpy, so the card's not so lumpy. Okay, so that's how you do the front of the card. Oh, wow, it's five in the... So we have more... We have someone watching from the Netherlands. Cool. Five in the morning, you're saying. I like to every once in a while see what people are saying about in the comments. Yeah, so now she's, okay, so she, we're back to the folding. Uh, so Daisy was the one who asked me for where my accent was from. Betty, hello, Betty. She's saying hi. And then Daisy's saying she always wanted to know which way to fold, and now she knows. And one paper is textured. Is one paper textured, the other not? No, no, this is textured, too. This is using the brick-and-mortar 3D embossing folder, and this was using the texture weave embossing folder. So to answer your question, they're both textured, but they don't have to be. You could have just done any, any layer, any card. Anyway, I'm going to talk while I do the other. I'm going to just kind of do the other and you can watch me do it. Yeah, one, one, yes. I didn't emboss the card base itself because the card base, you don't emboss the card base. You don't, no need to emboss the card base. Okay, I have a fellow Pennsylvanian. So Karen Murphy saying she grew up in Pittsburgh and she moved away 45 years ago. But yes, whenever you're around the family, the accent comes out. That, that's what's happening right now is I'm, around some of my family and their definitely accent comes out more. You'll hear it more this summer. But I do have to speak slower when I'm in certain places. I've actually I've actually been um, just anywhere, like to gas stations in the south or whatever, and they'll say, what country are you from? Because they don't recognize my accent. And I say, well, you know, I was born and raised here, <laughs> but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Okay, see what I'm doing? I'm just going around, and then I'm going... See, I'm going around like that. So I'm just doing this little crisscross. Just adding texture to the card. Adding extra layers and ribbons and vellum and just fun stuff to your card. Okay. And I'm just tying a little knot, but you could just use adhesive, but it, the knot will keep it from ever coming apart. And we will see if I can get a knot out of this one. I'm just going to get a knot by pulling it a little tighter like that, right? I can always loosen it after I let go, but it's easier for me to tie the knot when, with the card in a little bow. <laughs> Not in a bow bow, you know what I mean, a bowed shape. So I'm just going to tie my knot. When I let go, it should flatten out. I just didn't leave you guys a lot of room here. But I had to make my twine... I, my, I had to make my linen thread last for enough kits. My kits were based on how much... I still have a few kits. Uh, 
not the stamps themselves, but I can always order them. But the Butterfly Bijou, there we go. See how I just did that? And then I went like that, and it all straightened out. It all stretched out, so it's fine. The Butterfly Bijou paper is what's the, the limiting factor. I put those in the kits, and that's a retired item. Can't get that anymore. But it's not that I still can't make kits. I just can't make kits with all the same things in them. Oh, I like how that came out. Okay, so we're just going to trim it. So now we're going to attach Now we're going to attach these. So you, you have a choice, but I'm, I like to attach it straight with adhesive. I didn't use dimensionals for this part. I used dimensionals for this part, but for this part I just used adhesive because the paper's already textured. The, the, the twine came out from the bottom with no problem, meaning like it's okay, it's okay to just use adhesive and just attach these on straight. So I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus Adhesive. That's what I'm using, Seal Plus. Seal Plus is very strong. And it also gives me a chance to add that one extra line over that ribbon so that ribbon never comes out. Now the twine's not coming out because we tied it in a knot. So the twine's not gonna come out from the side of your card. But the ribbon could come up if you don't add that extra line of adhesive. There's an extra line of adhesive there, so we're okay. I'm just adding little rows right there. So that's it, so there you go. You add some adhesive and just attach your card. Make sure when you do it, because I've done this before, that you're attaching it right side up and not upside down. And I think when you use an eighth of an inch, it's personal preference, it's easier to center these cards. When you use a quarter of an inch, they always seem wonky compared to the eighth of an inch ones. The eighth of an inch just seems so much easier to center. See that perfect centering with the even amount of space around the sides. Whereas like when you get the quarter inch one, you're like, oh, not exact. Now we'll just do this one. And I could, I'll probably just do more of these after the video because you just, while I'm on this part, I may as well make more cards, make more, just do things in stages, get a lot of cards made. And I'm trying to give a card to whoever did the deluxe. I, sometimes I put a little adhesive in the middle. This one already had adhesive on it. I'm going to put a little bit more adhesive on that one piece of ribbon. So some, some that signed up for the deluxe, I'm trying to give them one of my sample cards if I can, but I didn't have that many samples made, but I will have more samples made now. Okay, checking that it's right side up, putting this down on there. Okay, and now we'll add our vellum doilies. The vellum doilies are gonna be in front of the sentiment. I guess we have to figure out which sentiment we're gonna use. And we'll also have to make the card, we're gonna make the inside of here too. So take your piece of, we'll do the very vanilla, just gonna be plain inside. So we'll, we'll be able to get the sentiment out of this and we'll be able to get the, the inside of the cards out of this very vanilla. So go ahead and trim that down. You want it, this one, we're just gonna make it, since, since the card itself is four and a quarter, we're just gonna make these four inches. The inside of the card, four inches, right? That one's a little wonky. We'll, use, we'll just do one of these four inches and then the card's five and a half, so we're gonna go four by five and a quarter. Four by five and a quarter. I'll do it again. That's for the inside of the card. Okay, four by five and a quarter. No need to have the eighth inch there. This is just for your sentiment. I mean, not your sentiment, your, your, your message on your card. Looks like I gotta sharpen my, I gotta sharpen this. I use like aluminum foil to sharpen my blades, but I, actually I gotta change my blades getting dull. You can tell when your blades get dull, little raggedy edges. Okay, so there, that's the inside of the card. Now let's do that. See, if this, see, there's a little something on that one. I know a little bit of something got on that one, so I'm just going to use this piece here. We're going to do four. Oh, and then you save these because you got these extra strips you can use for different sentiments and things, right? So you got this, you got four by five and a quarter. And that's the inside of the card. And we'll go ahead and we're going to cut this. We're just going to cut this in half, like around this size. These are going to be for our sentiments, making little pieces of very vanilla while we're here. And we're going to go ahead and attach this in the inside. Okay, that one's already done. This one is, does that one have, this one needs one inside. There's a little black spot on there, so we'll use... That'll be the inside of the card. And you don't want to use Whisper White. 
Let me, I could find a piece to show you how funky that would look. I mean, you, it's okay to use Whisper White, but what I'm saying is because I'm using Cherry, Cherish, the Happy Moments, because I'm doing the very vanilla on the outside, and I've actually already embellished this one, you wouldn't want to use like white on the inside of your card. See, look, let me see if I can find a piece of white. Well, that's an envelope, but you know what I mean. Because you're using very vanilla on the outside, you wouldn't use, want to use white on the inside. There's a difference in the colors. So you want to be consistent. You want the inside of your card to look like the outside of your card. So that's just another little tip. You could have used very, if you don't have very vanilla, then that's okay. You, you don't need very vanilla, but then you, could, you would use Whisper White on the inside, but then you would also use Whisper White right, right here. White would look fine out here, but then use white on the inside is all I'm saying. Okay, so there we are. That's where we're at. Now we're going to, we got the vellum and we got the, we're going to do a different embellishment, not that one, because a lot of you don't even have the stamp set. And it's not even a stamp set I recommended. This was called, oh, I forgot the name of it, something about etched, and this was called Etched in Nature. Most of you don't have Etched in Nature. I got it because I attended an event and they gave me the Etched in Nature. And I did stamp a bunch of those, but I'm thinking more... Like, I think, I, I recommended a different sentiment. Oh, here's, here's what it looks like with an extra piece of early espresso, with an early espresso background, just to give you, you know, just to change things up. So you could do something like that. See, same concept, add extra ribbon. Anyway, let me find that stamp set I recommended. It's, it's something about, it's something like thoughtful, something or other. I have it right here. Here it is. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking more like this. Inspired Thoughts. It's a new, came out in our annual catalog. It's all, it's, it's all sentiments. So it's a great, it's a great set. So I'm thinking we'll take something here and we can either say, we're just going to see, first of all, you go by what dyes you have. I don't want to stamp onto a, this, this thing, by the way. I'm done with the scoreboard. I want to stamp onto my table. So we're going to put down the silicone mat, right? Put down the silicone mat. Especially because there's a tablecloth there and the table's not flat. But what I'm saying is, I'm going to just, I, I am limited by how many dyes I traveled with. So here are some dyes from the Hippo and Friends. Gosh, I forget when, which that one's for. But I have a few dyes here. I thought these, are, these three are definitely from Hippo and Friends dyes. Like this one here that I used. See, it's the stitch dye. So I'm thinking I'm going to use a sentiment that will fit with the dyes I have. So we'll cut out. So let's see. You make a difference every day. See, the, the nice thing about butterflies and the reason I chose them for this course, peace, love, and joy fits. Heartfelt sympathy, you would have to use a different one who could do a sympathy card for one. Here, with heartfelt sympathy. We'll do a sympathy card for one. That's a perfect thing for butterflies. But see, butterflies, and we'll do a thank you so much if we can fit. Yeah. We can do a thank you so much. You, you see what I mean? The butterflies go with everything. They're just... Here, heartfelt sympathy. Okay, let's look at what shape that is. We'll even show you how to mount a stamp because it is boot camp after all. So you say you have a stamp set with heartfelt sympathy. Let's find the stamp. Here it is. Say this is the stamp with heartfelt sympathy. And you're like, well, how do I get this onto my stamping block? Well, first you got to peel off the little sticker that comes with it, right? Then you have to go in here and get the, then you go in here and you take this part off, this sticker cover. Okay, and then you're going to mount this onto there. Put it down flat, and you're going to take your stamp, and you're going to stick it on. So then it, it's a, called a cling stamp, so then it'll stick on your stamping block. I already have a Peace, Love, and Joy in here because I was working on Peace, Love, and Joy cards. So let's put that back, and we're going to take a stamping block. This is just one of the Stampin' Up! stamping blocks that came with the kits. Your stamping block may be thicker. So we're going to peel it off, and you can put it down, face up like that, and you're going to just... Touch your stamping block to it. See? And that's how, you, that's how you attach your stamp. So again, if you want to use Etched in Nature, that's what I used first. But I'm going to go ahead and use with Heartfelt Sympathy. Now I'm going to use Cherry Cobbler because that's the color I, I'm using for, you know, for these cards. Cherry Cobbler. We're just going to keep using Cherry Cobbler. And because I know Cherry Cobbler goes, do you see how I open the stamp set? The stamp pad. Hope you saw that. I don't want to leave anything out. Okay. Now, because I re-inked it recently, look at the ink oozing out the side. There's lots of extra ink on the side there. Cherry Cobbler, don't wear white, by the way, when you're using Cherry Cobbler ink. You will end up getting it all over the place. So I'm going to take a sticky, sticky note. 
Okay, we'll just grab one of these. This is a wish list tool. We'll just put the Stampin' Up wish list there. And we're, we're going to stamp onto that first. Because don't waste your very vanilla cardstock, right? With heartfelt sympathy. Always stamp onto a piece of paper first. It's coming out nice. So we're good. Even though it's a brand new stamp, sometimes you got to get that ink to soak in there. But it seems to be coming out nice. And we'll go ahead and do that one with heartfelt sympathy. Okay, always do an extra one in case your die slips or whatever. So that's going to fit. I'm just going to go down here. Leave it there as a guide to make sure you go down far enough to do a next one. In fact, this is how I roll. I'm probably I'm going to do a third one while I'm here. I'm not, maybe not die cut them all, but just, just do them while you're here. And then let's do the other one that we said was going to be. Thank you. Oh, do I already have that one? Yes, thank you so much. Is actually already, it already has a sticker on it. Thank you so much. So we'll do one of those. So we're going to peel this off. And some people put washi tape under here to get them to come up easier. But I just peel it off. I'm going to stick it over here to remember to wash it. And we're just going to stick that one down here. Stick that one down. Or up, I'm sorry. Face it up like that. I'm going to kind of go like that angle here. Gives me a little bit more stabil stability on this kind of block. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Let's see. Perfect, it's stamping well. And this is not the one I cut. What I'm looking for is the piece of, that's that. What happened to the other piece of very vanilla? Because I'm using the mini stamping cut and emboss machine, I don't wanna use these big pieces of very vanilla. I wanted to use the thinner ones that I just cut one in half. And it's okay, our trimmer's here. Oh, there it is, there it is. I was going to go get it again or I was going to stamp another one. So there's, there's a piece of very vanilla here. Let's put that down so you can see what I'm doing. See, I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Put that down. Tap, tap, tap. Thank you very much. Now that one was a bigger die. I was going to use a bigger die for that one, this die here. So lay it there to make sure, right? Make sure that you're not putting the next stamp where the die is going to be. I think I'm probably only going to get two or something in there. I like it. I like it. It came out. I mean, I'm happy that when you stamp and it comes out right, you just sing. Ah! Right? Because you don't have to, when you don't mess up your stamps and you save a lot of paper, it's always a good feeling. Always good to sing. So we're going to take our little mini, mini cut and emboss machine. We're going to open it up, right? So cute. And we're going to go ahead and run these through. So we need our little base. So when you do dies on this one, You need the sandwich is your sandwich number one. That's your bottom plate. And then you're going to put your plate. You need two plate number twos. So they say, see they're called plate number two. But I change up the order, right? I change up the order like that in the different directions just to keep them from getting warped. Because see how they get a little warped from all the use? But I just keep changing up the order I put them in. Still this order as far as the sandwich goes, but the order of the, the way and the direction I put them in, I change that up. So I'm going to put this sympathy, I'm going to put this down like that. See, plate one, plate two, with heartfelt sympathy. And now you need your painter's tape. Painter's tape is a must. Or washi tape. You just can't expect these to stay without some help. I mean, you, by the time you move it to your little platform, by the time you start cranking it through, if yours stays still, I don't care if you have a magnetic plate or not, nothing seems to ever stay still with me. I always have to tape it. Like that, little piece of tape. Okay, now I'm going to put the top plate on. There's my sandwich. We'll do it again. Don't worry if you missed it. This is boot camp. We do everything at least twice. I try to do everything twice. Putting the machine right there like that. And I probably should have done it, even though I'm right-handed. I'm going to probably crank it this direction just so you, you know, my hand doesn't get in the way. But I'm cranking. What I'm doing is I'm cranking. It goes either direction. See how I'm cranking it? And now to get, it's not really catching, so I have to push that a little. See, I'm pushing it a little with my hand, and then I'm helping it through. See how that just did that? And I'm sort of cranking it with my other hand. Now it's kind of hard to go in there, so now I'm going to hold this still on top. So there we go. Oops, I'm going to sure we don't bend that other die. I make a big mess when I craft. That's just how I roll. So here we go. We got this little stitch piece. Is that brilliant or what? I like. So I said, you know, use whatever punches you have, use whatever, 
whatever dies you have. These are from Hippo and Friends. So you do all your stamping. You keep reusing the same piece of tape over and over. Tape it down. Now, the other option is if you have clear, what's called, they're called photopolymer stamps. These are, what, these are what's called cling stamps. Okay? These are cling stamps. <laughs> you're saying your table looks like yours. You, lots of, lots of you're saying, so it's not just me. Um, oh, good. So Kay is saying, first time live, and I've been binge watching replays. <laughs> well, my brother, she's talking to her brother's scan and cut, right? And she's making buckets of crafty goodness. You got to make those for everything you have. I have buckets of crafty goodness for everything. You should see my butterfly one. This is my traveling bucket of crafty goodness for my butterflies. Look how many things are in that one. So bucket of crafty goodness is just, <laughs> it just means all your little extra embellishments you make. So you see I'm making extras right now. You might, I might be making one card. All right, so to not ever forget my train of thought, what I was trying to say is, say you have a photopolymer stamp, one that you can actually see through as opposed to these, these stamps here, which are called cling stamps. Then I would actually, if I had a photopolymer stamp I could see through, then I would just cut all the shapes first. I would literally, I would take, we're just cutting shapes. I would take this piece here and I would just cut a bunch of shapes, just like this, just with cardstock, just with a bunch of blank shapes. In fact, I carry them around with me when I'm traveling. I have a bunch of blank shapes. And you stamp onto them later. So you don't have to stamp and then try to line this up and cut. It's just that because it's a cling stamp, I wanted to make sure I got the exact alignment. So it's a cling stamp. Oop, that's not going to fit in the machine if I don't do it. Here, let's lay this down. I'm just using the same piece of tape over and over. So you can always cut a bunch of shapes and stamp them later. Even using your stamparatus is good for that. So there you go. There's my little sandwich. There's the top part of the sandwich. Notice you never want to put them in directly. Did you notice how I was not putting when I'm die cutting? I'm not putting them in directly like this because... You can't get them, they don't catch in when you push them through the machine. And notice how I'm trying to help the machine a little bit on the bottom. I'm trying to help push it through a little. And it's not catching, oh, that's because the back platform wasn't down. That's okay. I'll just do it like that. It'll catch. And don't worry, you just have to see it'll catch. It cut, see? And what I'm doing is I'm just cranking it through. It's such a great little machine. The little, the little machine here, the little cut and boss machine. The simplicity of it. So I'm done with those, but if you want, you can save your little scraps and, you know, cut out your, cut out your basic shapes from them. So now that piece of painter's tape is toast, right? Because it's, it's, I've used it enough. But it never ripped my paper. It just ripped all the extra paper because I've run it through three times. So let's go ahead and do the thank you so much with the other hippo and friends dies. Now at this point, this is getting warped. I'm going to turn it around, right? You can also keep turning it around that way. Just keep changing things up. Don't, don't try to put the things in your machine the same way over and over. Piece of painter's tape. So the sentiments I chose were based on the dies I had. You, you may want to do that too. Base them on the punches you have. Or, you know, if you don't have any dies or any punches and you're trying to follow along and you just want to make a card, you can do everything I'm doing. You don't have to use these fancy dies. You just make rectangles. Or shapes, like you make your own little banners. Don't worry if you don't have the same. So there's that one. Came out nice. Like, don't worry if you don't have the same thing I have. The same materials. Every card is going to look different. So we're using that piece of tape again. Number one. Number two. Don't worry that the tape is lumpy. As long as your sentiment is straight. And so now I have them made, even though, you know, you might not have wanted to wait. Oops, this one. I better not put that one in yet. If you guys caught that, the bottom, the bottom platform wasn't, it wasn't covering the bottom platform. That wouldn't have worked. I need the whole thing to go in further. You need to have a sandwich touching all the pieces where the steel is to, for the pressure. So you can't just put, like, the plastic hanging off. Because if you ever get half a die cut, it means that your bottom plate wasn't on. Wasn't on all the way. Like if you if you get half a die cut, you might have had this kind of situation going on where you weren't putting the pressure evenly among the plates. 
Been there, done that. All right, so we're done all our die cutting. Now all we're left is our flowers and stuff that we're embellishing. Oops, something got on that one. But that's okay, that's where an embellishment can go. So we, that's why we make extras. We'll use that one. And we'll take the best of those three and we'll use this one. That's the best of those three, I think. They're all nice. They all came out nice though. So what we want to do now is I'm going to move this machine out of the way. To, you close it. It's nice and portable. And you put it down there. So now we're going to do our flower. So for the flowers, I gave you flowers in your little bucket of crafty goodness. So you just take out your little flower. And it's a flower that I got from... Where did I get this from? Here we go. Actually, I'm going to get another one out. I'm going to get a small one, too. I gave you a big one. I'm going to do a small one and a big one because I need a small one for that one. So I got this from this thing that's retired now, unfortunately, but I gave you some of the paper from it. It was called the Boho Indigo Product Medley. What I'm doing now is I'm taking my Dark Pool Party Blends Marker, but of course, take whatever marker you have. I'm going to take the brush side of my blends marker, and I'm going to color my flower. So in the Boho Product Medley, Boho Indigo Product Medley, there were these flowers that are felt. And I just thought, oh, these were great on cards. They, they just add such texture. So I just kind of split up, shared my, shared my little embellishments and put, put one in each kit. But, you know, of course, use whatever embellishments you have and need bling. There's also bling in your kit. You can use some rhinestones or something. I'm just trying to add bling. So it doesn't look like mine, right? It doesn't quite look like mine. And here's how I got it to look like that more. So what I did is for that is I just took my my fingers and I rubbed it in there and then when it dried it got see it's really wet because alcohol is really wet the alcohol markers but I rubbed it like this and see how there's getting like ink on my fingers but you want to rub it in there to let it to let it soak to let the see how it's soaking through so you can color the flowers we'll do the same with that one and now hopefully I don't get that on my yeah, I'll, I'll rub that off. Okay, so now we want to take those and put those on the card with the, with the vellum and stuff. So we're going to find our cards that we're working on here. Here's our cards we're finishing up. We're embellishing. Here we go. And we're going to put the flowers onto the sentiment, the vellum onto the sentiment. We're going to just move the camera a little bit, tilt it like that. You get to see. So now you need... Um, so you, you should start out by, if you're going to put the vellum doilies down, I would probably, I'd start out, and they came in your kit too, you got four of them, but some of you only got one, and I said, here's one for making your card, I'll send you more later, because I had to order more vellum doilies. These are called square vellum doilies, they're in our catalog. So what you want to do is you want to put, put down the vellum doily, here we'll just do, we'll just do one, like that, we're going to put down a little, just kind of a little... Well, it depends on, you want to make sure this is going to hide it. So I probably shouldn't have put that, there we go. Hopefully this hides it. I shouldn't have put the adhesive up so high. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Make sure you put your adhesive where your, where your embellishment is going to hide it. You don't, want your, you don't want to see your embellishment, right? You don't want to see the adhesive come through. So that stays down. Now, for this, I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals. Oops, I did let my adhesive see through. So peel it off. If you can get it before it dries, you're good. See, we make mistakes here and we keep on going. So you don't want the adhesive shining through. That's okay because I'm going to put some more. So I just need it to go down slightly, down here. Now when I put it there and I put my sentiment, it will get hidden. See, it's hidden. Can't see the... So we're going to use some dimensionals so just some dimensionals maybe maybe the large ones here we'll use the large ones so put them down there between the rope because the rope's already sticking up the, the twine right so stick them maybe over there so how are we going to make sure this thing doesn't come off well because this is adhered so even if even if this is only touching your your doily you got your doily adhered with the with the adhesive, so this is not going to come up. Your sentiment's not going to come up. So I'm actually sticking these right on. That's where, because remember, I only put adhesive on the back of that ribbon. That's why I'm sticking these down. Not in the way of the twine, but right there. OK. 
Okay, making sure these aren't too old, because sometimes if you use really old ones, they lose their stickiness, but let's just stick another one there for good measure. We'll put a mini dimension on there for good measure. So there's that. And now for the flower, I've tried glue dots. And you know probably from listening to me before, I'm not a big fan of glue dots, but sometimes that's all you have. So glue dots would work on this, but I'm thinking, you know, there's nothing as good as liquid adhesive, right? So to finish off this card, we're gonna use, we're gonna put some liquid adhesive on there. But if you have glue dots and that's all you have, by all means, use whatever you have. So stick that down there. Don't give me a hard time, glue. Okay, it's coming out. Just making sure it's coming out. Little blob. I mean, not a little blob, it's kind of a big blob because I want the flower to really stay on there. And this is just our all-purpose adhesive. Multi, whatever, Tombow glue, multi-purpose adhesive. That's all that is. And voila, we have finished our first Butterfly Brilliance card in the series. We've, I know it took a while to finish it, but that's because I'm going through all the steps. But of course, we wouldn't make one card at a time. We'd be making many cards at a time. Now, you could have also done the extra step of embossing your little, your little piece here, if you want. But I didn't emboss those because I didn't have that, that big embossing machine with me. And the, the folder called the Texture Woven, whatever, textile, woven textile 3D embossing folder and the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder is using the bigger machine. So we're gonna put that there. We'll add the flower in a minute. Actually, maybe I like that one better. That one's almost seeming crooked. Yep, we're gonna put that there. So this time, it's gonna be hard to get the adhesive to stick on there. So instead, I'm gonna just put the adhesive right on the back of here to make sure this really stays. And I'm gonna also put the vellum down. But it's gonna be hard to hide. What I'm saying is it's gonna be hard to hide where the adhesive is in the vellum because there's hardly any. I'm just gonna have to move this down a little. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to put a little bit of adhesive, right? Moving that down, moving it up a little because there's not much of a way to hide it behind the vellum. Kinda. So. We'll see if I can hide it. But you definitely need some there where your doily is. And that's where I put the doily. Here, we're going to put the doily down. It's, it's good. It's, it just needs a little bit of adhesive. Maybe a little more. And then this will help because this will stay on there. I was going to use the dimensionals, and I still can. I still can use the dimensionals, and I still will. But I also wanted to put a little bit of adhesive there to make sure it sticks to the vellum because because the, there isn't a whole lot of wiggle room for this little tiny, oops, that's over too far. So you're going to put a little test. You're gonna put, we'll just, you know what we'll do is we'll put them right on. Let's see. We should make sure we put them right where they're going to be hidden. Okay, so there we go. So I have a little bit of adhesive on there too. And then we've got to make sure my sympathy is centered. And again, if, you're, if your glue's not all the way dry, use something else to pat it down with. And then we'll put some glue on that one. And this one's gonna have to kind of stick off the edge a little. This one might end up over here. It might not end up touching my sentiment because we don't want to cover up the word with. So I'm gonna put a big old blob of glue so that hopefully, there we go. So it's kind of sticking over, there we go. And that's our second card we did. And you can see how quick it goes when you do the second, third, fourth card. Each card you make, is, it goes quicker the next time. So that's how to do it start to finish. And you can also emboss those sentiments like that. So this was using Etched in Nature. And this was using, hmm, I forgot the name of it. This one's using Inspired Thoughts, which I was recommending for the class because a lot of you, I didn't think you're going to have etched in nature. There's only like a couple sentiments on it. It's more of a nature stamp set. So I hope you enjoyed this part two of the Butterfly Brilliance series. Okay, we'll be making more card projects and start with some 3Ds on the next part of our series. Let me just go ahead and say hi to everybody and wrap it up here. Have the night shift. Hello from the, okay, Debbie's saying hello from the night Netherlands. Okay, we said, we said hi to you and it says, some, some have the night shift, but he's saying that. Thank you, Betty, for your comment. And you got your new paper pumpkin kit already? That's awesome. I'll be doing a video on that soon, too. I didn't get mine yet. 
And hello from Ontario. Hello, Linda from Ontario. I'm glad you just bought a scan and cut. I have three of them. I absolutely love them. So I'm glad you bought a scan and cut. And Kaze is first time watching. Kaz, Kaz. Yeah, an eighth of an inch. She was talking about. Karen is also talking about the eighth of an inch. She likes the eighth of an inch borders. And Daisy's saying whoop whoop. That's because we got it to center. And hello, Yvonne. And thank you, Yvonne, for that. And Daisy, nicely done. So I'm glad you like everything. And so I hope you learned how to create cards in this in this video. So what I'm going to do next time is if I'm so if I use another if I if I make another card like this. We're not going to go over exactly how to make this card again because I taught it in the series. But if I make a card that opens, these are all opening top. If I make a card that opens this way, then I would go over how to make that because it would be a new piece of content. So within the series, you're going to have a lot of repeat techniques and you're also going to have a lot of new learning as you learn like new skills as we go along. And you can, you know, you're going to learn how to fix your mistakes as you go and how to create all kinds of cards with this series. So for scheduled for oops, next time, we're going to be doing some coloring with the blends. Okay. Let me just show you that one. This is using the blender pen. Okay. So we're going to be using the blender pen for this one and making a card like this. And then I'm going to do start with some 3D items. Okay. So we're doing something like this, something similar for our next one. So that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef, and I hope you're enjoying the series, and I hope you'll check out the playlist and watch the rest of the series if you missed it, and we will keep on going. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming.